get things started here. Hey, everybody. Let's see, where is my... There's Lily. Welcome to class, everybody. How are you? The Phillips family has arrived. <laughs> Morning. Hola. How is everyone today? It's Friday, huh? And it's very so Friday. Yeah. Every day on Friday is very so Friday. Is it? Dexter, Zoe, how are you all today? Get that up high enough here. So everybody and have mom, what's that? My mom told me we're painting the picture today. We are. <laughs> you excited? <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. Does everybody have their paint out? In your yep, but there. not open. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to open it quite yet because we don't want to knock yep. it over. I know I would knock it over if I had it all out. <laughs> I usually do, or I put my hand in it. Um, okay. Wait a couple more minutes for a few more people. We can use my hand to do the circles while we have the paintbrush. Yes, you can. Very really cool. easy to do it with my finger, but too, too big for the big, the smallest yeah. circle. Mm -hmm. We call that finger painting, huh? Yep. Yep. And that's fun. That could be really fun. Maybe that's love, something we'll work on. I love finger painting. Do you? <laughs> when I'm painting my pictures, sometimes I will blend or I will use my fingers to blend a little bit. Because well, sometimes I, have, I had a painting from last night. You painted it last night? Oh, you nice. painting. Remember? Mm -hmm. I painted a flower with some gold and I and I painted a You paint so you painted some flowers? I painted one big one? flower and a person. Oh nice. Well good. So you got a little bit warmed up yesterday. We were learning about um, Georgia O'Keeffe, so she was, was trying to do. Say. <laughs> that she was trying to do a, a sun one of her sunflowers. You want to uh -huh. get it? I gotta go get it so I can see. Yes, please. Yeah, I was thinking of Georgia O'Keeffe yesterday, actually looking for um, the next few projects, and I was considering Georgia maybe um, in January. I think we'll do mm -hmm. Degas, um, who liked to paint dancers. So oh. we will, I think we'll do Degas, Edgar Degas okay. next month. My mom over it is better than me. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I thought I put it in the kitchen, but it's not. Oh. <laughs> All right. Everybody have their paints ready and their brushes and your paper towel. I uh, need to grab my brush. Gold. Look. Look at my gold. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. I use the gold. I use yeah. the gold to make it shine. Nice. It's super shiny, isn't it? Doing that to my uh -huh. Nice. I'm ready. Everybody ready? Me too. All right. Let's see. Is it just you? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's make sure I see everybody. I thought I saw. I thought I let somebody else in. Hmm. All right. Well, they'll be joining us. <clears throat> yeah. 
Okie dokie. So did, did any of you get a chance to look at the links for the read aloud stories I well, sent? I don't know how to say. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, well, I, to help today. I think I sent one, two, three, four links to four different stories. They're, um, they're all. Oh, my, mom, my mommy's going to do it right now. Oh, she's going to pull it up? Okay, good. Yeah, it's just somebody, um, just some random person recorded themselves reading four stories that are about Matisse. They're children's stories. Oh. So, so you don't even have we'll to. to my mom going to go back. We kind of okay. have been under the weather, so Aww. I can't check oh, on email. Mama, oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so just we whenever, you, whenever you get to it, I, um, I, I didn't even realize so many people read random stories and recorded it. So you don't even have to go look for the book. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to wait for the library. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, so do you remember Henry Matisse? He was he was a French artist, so he's from France, way over the Atlantic Ocean, in Europe. And he was born way back in 1869. This is just some of the stuff that um, we talked about last time when we were drawing some of these objects. Um, and he was introduced to art by his mom when he was sick in bed. He was really sick in bed and um, almost had to have surgery. And his mom brought him some art supplies and that's how he got started. Um, and he started some other different styles. Um, he like was, um, he's the beginner for Fauvism. We talked a little bit about that last time. And um, he worked with some of these painters that we've already studied, like Van Gogh and Monet. So he studied the Impressionists, but he was more considered um, post-Impressionist, okay? We've talked a little bit about those um, styles of painting. And so he really painted in bright colors. Look at the colors that we have here in the picture. Do you see, do you remember when we talked about warm colors and cool colors? Anybody remember the warm colors? Think of sunshine. Go ahead and unmute. Let me know which colors in the picture yeah. are warm. Yeah. Yeah? I know. Blue. Blue? Yellow. Red. Blue is cool. Blue and I green. I know the warm ones. I mean, red. Which ones? Red can be warm. Oh. Yep. And Which yellow is? can be also warm. Yep. Yep. Yellow uh, is warm. And there's one more in there. Orange. Orange. Very good. So the red, yellow, and orange in our picture right here are warm. And then the there's color. two colors that are cool. What are the cool colors? Anybody know? What do you think? Cool colors in this picture. I see green and blue, huh? Yep, green and blue are cool colors as well as some pinks and purples. Those can be very cool as well. Um, and any light shade of all those colors. So we've got, um, and these also- like yellow. Yes, yep. Yellow is very warm. We think of the sun with yellow, don't we? And the sun is very warm. Um, we also learned a word called the primary colors. Does everybody remember primary colors? Those are the red, yellow, blue, right? There are three primary colors. And with those three colors, we can make so many more colors. So we're going to mix two of our colors here today, okay? Sometimes mixing colors can be a little bit hard, a little bit tricky. We're going to start with just a little bit of paint and go up from there. 
Oh, there's some more painters. Okay, good. <clears throat> so the primaries, again, red, blue, yellow. So we're going to start with red. Okay, we're going to start with our red warm color. And if you have your caps off, you can take your cap off your red. Might as well leave the others on till we need them because we don't want to knock it over and spill it all over your mom's table. Okay. Remember these paints can stain your clothes. So be real careful. And if you do get it on your clothes, try and wash it off really quick with cold water. Okay. All right. So starting with the warm red, I'm using my, um, this flat brush that should be similar to yours. And do you see some of these design? I have the same one in the picture. If you want to cover, we're going to start on this side. If you want to cover up those circles, those kind of funny shapes, and we will just paint over it. If you want to go around those blue shapes, the hearts, the circles, the funny goofy shapes, um, you can go around those and leave those shapes so we can paint them blue. Or you can go right over top. I can see my pencil line right through the paint. So I'm going to go right over top, okay? And just covering it up like that. So we're starting on this side. I'd like to start towards the top. So when we get to the bottom, the top will dry, and then we can start on something else on the top. If we start on the bottom of a painting, what might you tend to do with your arm? I always get my arm in the wet paint. So if you're starting on the bottom and you have wet paint on the bottom and then you go up to the top of your painting, you might put your arm right in your paint. So let's start at the top and work down, okay? And as some of these colors dry, then we can put a little more like red, we can add a little more red, a second coat of red in a little while, but we'll wait till it's dry. You might not need a second coat. I think this might be enough right here. So we're going to do this side of the wall. Now that wall, I don't know if someone just painted those hearts and circle shapes on the wall, or maybe it's some wallpaper. Back then, I think some people did do a lot of wallpapering and, but he was an artist. Maybe he did those shapes on his own wall. I don't know that we'll ever know, but it's interesting either way. So I'm going over this whole wall. You'll or, yes. Or it might be, or he might have painted the or he might have painted those shapes on his wall in his yep. room. Yep, that's what I kind of wonder. If he was an artist, how many of you artists have painted on the wall? <laughs> Maybe that your parents haven't liked so much. <laughs> I wish my mom would have me. <laughs> well... If you have a designated space, that would be something interesting. I know there is chalk paint. I don't know if anybody's used chalk paint, but um, I've had friends. You have to give me chalk paint. <laughs> that you can draw with chalk, and you can even paint like a, um, or you can paint like a board. If, if you if have you like, a, like a board on the floor, you can paint yeah. on it. Exactly, or you can even lean and then it up you can like the wall. Tape it, and then you can tape it on the floor when it's dry. Yep, or you could hang it if you have, um, let's say, like a dry erase board, and you painted a coat of chalk paint over top of it. You could even hang it on the wall, and use that as your easel, right? You could draw right, or you know, draw with the chalk. And you paint the. I see on the squiggly line, um, it's red a bit. Yep, yep. We're going to continue down and paint that part. That's the floor. While we're painting, we're going down so we can do it. Yep, we're going downwards still. So now, um, looks like he has a red wall and a red floor. Maybe that's a rug. 
You think that's a rug with that squiggly design? Or his mom and dad might let him paint the floor. Maybe they did too. <laughs> I don't know that I'd be very happy with that, with my child painting on the walls or the floor. I will, Some I will of my kids them. have painted on the carpet before with a permanent marker. <laughs> and it was not our home. <laughs> I have had that experience. And let's see, now do you see these little um, rectangles places right here? Yep, those are red because we're looking through the table legs, the legs of the table. And we can see the floor through the legs here. So we're gonna paint a rectangle there and a rectangle right here. So yes, there's lots of different ways you can, um, different, different ways to um, display your work, whether it's some special chalk paint on a board or something that you could hang. Um, some people like to use easels to display their work, but I think the chalkboard, I think that would be a lot of fun actually. All right, can you be real careful and paint? It looks like a capital H. I think it's a shutter. It could be a shutter or part of the window. And so let's go, let's paint this H quick before we tackle our little fish. Be real careful though that you don't put your arm in the red, on your red wall. And just be real careful with your straight lines. Do the best you can. And this red line, part of the window, blends right in with the wall. That's okay. And then we've got the cross line right here. So Henry Matisse had two cats in his adult life. And this is one of them. Um, let me, I wrote the cat's names down somewhere here. It started with an M and I don't think it was this cat because he had, a, I saw pictures of two of his cats and he had a gray striped cat that had an M on his forehead and um, he gave the name, oh my gosh, where is it? I know I put it in my notes. I'll have to look for it. I'll look closer. Yeah, I can't, M-O-U. It, it was an interesting French name. Um, but he named him with the M because of the M on his forehead. <laughs> All right. Um, now we can turn it so we keep our arm out of the red. And let's paint those little red fish. I'd like to call them goldfish because we often have goldfish um, in little fish bowls. Um, but these aren't real gold, they're red. So I don't know what kind of fish they are. They could be just a darker orange red and he just painted them red. I don't know. I'm going to cover right over their eyes. So the little circle for an eye that I drew for you, you can paint right over it and we'll just put a dot for the eye in a little while, okay? I think we'll use a little yellow for a dot for the eye. And I'm gonna paint this one here. And the third little fish. And these aren't necessarily fish shapes, are they? They're just shapes, almost teardrop shapes, I see. And I'm just going to kind of, we call this blocking in the color. So I'm blocking in the red for these fish. Wow, a trucking company across the street here is like dropping things in it. Almost feels like an earthquake. It rattles the house. It's very loud. All right, while it's sideways like that, 
let's do the left side of the table. Right now it's on the bottom of the screen for you. Do you see in the picture the red on the left side? So let's leave this top line. This is going to be yellow, part of the windowsill, but this is red. So right next to the table here, make that red. Now Matisse, I, when I talked about him last time, um, he did a lot of paintings, but when he got older and he became pretty ill, he wasn't able to paint any longer. So he had assistants, some of his caregivers, paint paper in different colors, usually the bright colors again, and he cut out with scissors. Remember we talked about how he cut out shapes from the painted paper? He cut out the shapes and made a collage with the colored paper cut out. And it's really neat. Um, and perhaps we'll, we, we will do some things with um, paper for sculpture for some of our artists later. But um, I had the idea, but I know you guys love to paint, so I wanted to keep this to a painting. But we might do both. We might do a schedule. Instead of drawing, we might do a, um, a sculpture and also painting and a project coming up. There's an artist called Calder. His last name is Calder. He is a sculptor. So he made different kinds of sculptures. And I saw one of his works in um, Michigan. He has a great big red one on display downtown in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I used to live there, so I got to see it. Um, so we're going to study him probably... I don't know, after January, I think. So that will be some fun sculpting we will do. All right, so if you want to go and paint it over this whole area, we're just going to draw, you should be able to see your lines, I think, if you don't paint too, too um, thick of paint. Can you see your lines through the red? I think that shows up fine. As you can see in the picture, we're going to go over some of these shapes. I guess the other side of the rug on the floor here, we'll, we'll go over those shapes with some different colors. And I just want to make sure you can see your lines well enough to see those shapes when we paint them. So I'm just going to finish up the red. Is everybody ahead of me? Sometimes I get talking and I don't paint as fast when I'm talking. <laughs> Okay. All right, I got that side covered. And we have a little bit of red we will finish later. The flowers, kind of those dotted flowers in the grass outside the window. Um, but otherwise, we were done with that. So I'm going to turn it, let that red dry for a few minutes. And I think we'll work on blue. So go ahead and get your blue out. Take your top off your paint. I'm going to have a little surprise for you guys um, next month. Yes, Lily? Well, I'm, I'm still painting the red. Okay, good, good. Take your time. I don't want to well, rush. I, was, I wasn't beating you from the back. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing faster. Yeah, sometimes you guys are a lot faster than me. <laughs> They're speedy. All right, so if you are ready to move on to blue, if not, just take your time, okay? I don't want to rush anybody, but I want to keep an eye on the time because I know some families have to leave. <clears throat> In fact, I need to keep my phone out here. All right, lots of time. All right, so... While that my red is still drying, I'm going to turn it sideways here. Do you see the top part? See the sky? We often like to paint the sky blue, don't we? We're hopeful that we have a blue sky. <laughs> In the winter, we don't have so much blue, do we? It's pretty gray and cloudy. But 
I'm painting blue for the sky here. And then we will move down to um, or, or over to those hearts and circle shapes. Okay. I'm going to go around these, around the tail, around those orange mountains we see. He didn't always paint the same colors that were in reality. He, some, he often used different colors, more bright colors um, for his paintings. So you might not necessarily see a yellow cat, this bright yellow, would you? Um, but it was probably an orangey cat, maybe even white. Um, so he had this lighter colored cat and that gray striped cat. <clears throat> All right, there's some blue. And I'm going to turn it back this way. And if you can see the shapes that I drew on the right side on our wallpaper or our hand painted wall design, we're going to paint a heart shape. And they don't have to be perfect at all. Just get a heart shape in there, okay? I will probably come back with my smaller brush. I'm going to paint a big circle because there's a circle shape right there. And there's kind of a teardrop shape here. And there's kind of a circle shape here. And they don't have to be perfect. His drawings of his little designs on the wall here are just very random. So just make kind of a circle shape. Doesn't need to be perfect at all. Um, there's another heart shape right here. Like that. And another biggish circle, kind of an oval, I guess, right? It's not a perfect round circle. It's more of an oblong. So we call that an oval. Like that. And then another smaller teardrop shape there. And one more heart. And you see like the squiggly lines. You see a lot of these shapes are outlined with a black line, aren't they? You see that? We're going to do that. In fact, if you prefer to use like a Sharpie marker, if you have a marker handy, um, you can use that to do our outlining or just use your brush. Um, I don't know that your pencil, your drawing pencil would be dark enough. <clears throat> um, but yeah, if you have a marker handy, something else that you can do outlining in a little bit, we'll do the black outlining at the very end. We wanna make sure everything's dry. So I did the designs over here and this side is just about dry. Um, if your red is dry over here, then let's, let's see. I had a little extra blue on my brush. I wanted to wipe some of that off. So I'm going to um, look over here. So on the bottom, on, I guess this side of the rug, the left side, there's one, two, three shapes that are blue. So we're going to make those three shapes, okay? You should have, and maybe it's a little harder to see under the red, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shapes. Three of those we're going to paint in blue. And when we get to the other colors, we're going to make those that color as well. So I think this one we can make blue. And you can choose which of these little um, shapes that you want to 
paint whichever color. Here's one, I'll do blue, just kind of a shape. Doesn't have to be anything special. Um, this shape right here, I'm gonna make kind of round, maybe a little bit pointy. And how about this shape down here? This is a little bit curved, kind of like that. Okay. And I think we will leave the blue circles or these flowers that are in the grass outside the window. Let's leave that until after we finish our green grass. So let's rinse the blue out of our brush. Is everybody able to keep up okay? Is everybody in blue yet? Nope, there's Zach again. Oh, good. <laughs> I love your background. <laughs> oh, that's cute. All right, so go ahead and open your green. Cool color, green and blue. Whoops, I already squirted some on my tray here. Um, teacher? Yes, dear? What are we going to do the table? Um, let's do the table after the rest of the red dries and the green dries. So when we do the blue flowers up here in the grass, then we'll do our table, okay? Okay. All I want is... I got, I just did the leg, so I want to do it earlier. Okay, that's fine. I mean, if you want to do it now, you can. That's okay. I'm going to go over to the green that I already poured on my plate here. And make sure I keep that in the screen here. And so the grass in the window, looking out the window, goes right up to the window frame around the cat and I'm just gonna block in this area. It's another word we use in painting is blocking in. So I'm just going around his tail like that and We'll go straight across and make a grassy field here. Block in this area around his tail. I really like some of these bright colors. Who likes primary colors? Red, yellow, blue, Anybody have favorite colors that are the primary colors? Red. Red, you like red? Nice. I love red. There you. I'm going Pretty to, color. yeah. My favorite color is like a fuchsia, like a real pinky purple. Ooh. I love that. But I also I love blues, yes. Three color, can we paint over the little lines so yep. you have to see it? Yep, just put one coat. I right love there. every color, so you I do? choose blue. blue. I like purple. Well, you I like really purple. the rainbow. My favorite color is purple. Purple, I love purple too. I Usually I color. like the rainbows. Yep. I think I would like all the colors of the rainbow too, but especially blues and pinks, like fuchsia pinks. So we've got... Well, I like regular pink. Do you? Nice light pink. So yep, I'm doing one coat of the green to make the grass in the window here. And I can just see my pencil lines under the green. Okay, so don't put too much green so we can see. Yes. And 
that. Okay. So, and then we'll have another, um, let's see, oh, we need to do the red right here. I missed this red. We'll do that in a little bit. Um, so this green goes right up to here. And what else is green? The water. He made the water green. <laughs> But it helps make those red fish pop out, don't, doesn't it? So I'm going to turn it this way. Now that most of my red is dry, we got the grass done. We're going to actually mix some yellow in green to make kind of a lime green for the cat. But we're going to do that later, okay? So don't do the green on the cat yet. Let's paint in. And be careful if your fish are still wet. Mine still are a little bit. Let's paint the um, the fish bowl. So this area right here is green because we're seeing through this glass jar. You can see right through to the green grass, right? That's why we're painting that green as well as the water down here. So I will paint. I still want to leave that edge of the fishbowl. We are going to paint that, outline it in black. So if you can... It has a little bit of right on the top. Yep. Like a lawn color. So yep. it looks like it needs a little dash of yellow, right? Yep. Yep. That one little spot. A little, it's actually, little yep, it's spot. part of his leg. I think it's part of his leg. Oh, uh -huh. but if, see the thing that he dipped his, look at the edge of the, where he dipped it. It looks like it needs yellow a bit, right? Yep. So the top part of the water here, see how I made it a lighter, like a kind of a lime green as well? Uh-huh. Yep. The top of the water is going to be lime green. So you don't have to do that this bright green yet. Okay, we're just going to do here. Actually, this part right here. And I'm just being really careful. I'm going to leave some of my pencil lines white from the canvas because I'm going to go over it in black. We will outline it in black. So that little area um, is green and then I'm going to jump down to the water. Matisse made this water green because he likes the bright colors. I guess a clear jar was too boring for him. So we're making that green. We're paint right around our little fish, right around the cat's little paw because that's going to be yellow. And just bring it right across. Actually, there's some green up here. So we'll fill that area in. Finish the water. There's a little bit of blue. And I can't really tell if it's part of a chair or part of the table, but it matches the table. So um, when we come back to painting the table, we'll do this little spot here. And this it looks spot. like it looks like it's a part of the chair. It does. Look okay. carefully at you can see a chair. Yep, that's what I think too. I think that's a good guess. So go right up next to your little fish. Oh, well, I painted the whole fish bowl. Yep. The whole fish bowl is green, except for the parts of the cat and where you see through. <laughs> <laughs> is it funny? <laughs> yeah. Because it's like the, the part where you see the through the mm -hmm. line of the chair. You can mm -hmm. see his butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
I'm getting up real close. So just follow the line. So next to this piece of fruit, I think that's a lemon. We're going to. Um, well. Yes. Do you see how good I win right now? Pardon me, what's that, Lily? Look. Look how good I win. Very nice. Very good job. All right, I'm all around the little fish, little red goldfish. I'm going to finish the bottom rounded shape of this fish bowl. Like that. Okay. Emma, is this all the green we have to do? Um, almost, almost. Do you see down on the bottom left over here? Oh, yeah, a little green. The green shape. shape. Yep. Let me just color it in the room yep. right now. Let's make kind of a blobby shape right here between these two blue. Like that. <laughs> Okay. Now we can rinse off the color. Now I'm rinsing off the color. Rinsing the green. Please rinse it off. Rinse it off. And. How about we block in our yellow cap and then the window see the window sill the frame of the window this is yellow and this is yellow what else do we have yellow besides our cat um the lemons and yeah. the little things on the floor and the flowers way outside see yeah very good yep so we've got quite a bit of yellow to paint be careful of the green you just painted but let's start on our cat and you can always turn your canvas to the side if it's drier here, okay? So I am going to open my yellow. Let me close up this color okay. so I will spill it like how I spilled my medicine last night. Oh dear. <laughs> my mom had to give me more. Mm. But um, I'm not feeling so good. Yeah. <laughs> because my dad took me outside and I only was wearing pajamas. Oh. So I'm going to color the or paint the whole cat yellow. And then we're going to go on top of it when we create a little orange and light green, okay? So let's block yeah. in. We'll use that word again blocking in the cat with a yellow. So I'm going, um, let's see. I'm starting from the long wave. Okay, good. Starting yep. from the little leg. Perfectly fine. So I'm going to leave that top line of the goldfish bowl here. I'm going to leave that line. And I'm going to leave a line so I can see. I, I'm not sure. I think this um, this yellow might be pretty solid. It might be hard to see lines underneath it. So, well, it kind of looks tannish. Does it? Well, if you want to... So I can see my light even. You can? Okay, I good. Just dip my, I just dip a little bit into mine. Okay, yep, I can see mine just enough. I think that's fine. So go ahead and paint over those pencil lines for your cat. And yeah, I can see mine really well. So I'm just gonna go all the way around our cat here. You can just see those lines. So we'll be able to go over that with um, our black. Yours looks tan and mine looks yellow. <laughs> Here, right? Yeah, the camera um, does not give really nice correct color. Cause my, I have the same paint as you so my my 
yellow is actually the same one as yours. <laughs> I think I know why mine is brighter. Why? Because I have a bigger one. Hmm. Well, I think that's why. Sometimes cameras can kind of change the color that you're really looking at. So you're not always looking at the same color in a camera than what you see in reality. <clears throat> so but my God yellow what kind of computer well, what kind of computer I'm using? What? I said do I know what kind of computer I'm using? Oh computer. Yes, what? A touch screen. Ooh, I have a laptop I, touch screen. But this touch screen it can go down. Oh. And the and the computer things to ride on and the and the things so you it they're not connected. Oh that sounds like mine. You can take the keyboard off. It's not it doesn't have something to go together. Hmm. You it can go I'll somewhere set. on the it can go on the the keyboard thing can go on the floor, it can oh, go wow. on the table, you can move it. Oh, wow. That seems very portable. All right, let's see. You can still see your lines okay? I'm going to continue yep. on and do his leg. And then we'll get the frame of the window. So he uses lots of shapes. Last time we practiced drawing these shapes. And I Do also- have to color his whole body yellow? Yep, all yellow. And then we're gonna start the other colors on him? Yep, you got it. So when we practiced drawing the, sh the shapes, these shapes last time, I'm, hoping you will learn to recognize different shapes that you see everywhere. Oh, uh, I recognize all my shapes. You do? Good. Um, it just, it helps give you an eye for different things. And um, so I'd like you to practice when you see looking around at things. Um, if you see, oh gosh, a vase. Is that vase round? Is it kind of square? And my dog's body is an oval. Yep, yep. But uh, she's at her grandma's. Oh. <laughs> because she, because she had to go there a bit, so the mom can, so we can take a break from her. Oh. <laughs> but I don't like that. Oh, you miss miss them. Nookie. Sometimes I'd like to send my dogs away for a little bit so I can take a break. I don't like when my mom does it. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Did you see what Whoops. I just did? Not fair. Oh. I just oh, dropped no. my I dropped my yellow on my green. See, sometimes you can make steaks and but I am getting my paper towel wet with water from my rinse water, and I'm wiping the yellow I'll off. I never do that. Do you ever do that? Nope. Nope. Well, good. All right, I erased it from my green. Now it's all better. Um, so we got the- My paintbrush is colored. Yeah, okay. My paintbrush has three colors on it. For real. All right. Well, make sure you rinse it out really good when you're done so that the paint doesn't dry in it, okay? Oh, I always rinse it out good. Okay, good. Now I'm going to paint the frame of the window yellow. It blends right in with the cat, but that's okay. We will do an outline of that in a little bit. I think I especially love this painting because he uses such bright colors. I like bright colors. I know. Yeah. Colorfuler than our flower. Yep. Right? Yep. 
And this side, I'm again, I'm turning the canvas over so I don't put my hand all over my yellow on the cat. Because <laughs> I tend to be messy sometimes. When I'm done with my paint classes, I'm usually kind of covered in paint. I'm a little messy. But as long as you wash it off, you're good. Well, all I get paint on is my arms and hands. Yep. I even had green on my cheek the other day. <laughs> but I have an apron on, so I won't get my clothes dirty. Good job. I have a certain apron for painting. You can tell why it's painting. Uh -huh. See? All those mm -hmm. ladders. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to paint those three little yellow shapes. So can you still oh, see yeah. those through your red? I'm going to go over them. You might need a couple coats. So we'll let this one dry and we'll come back to it after we do those, the lemons, okay? I'm gonna, actually it's nice. And bright. So there's a yellow blob. Make another yellow blob. And a third yellow blob. There. There. There's four? Three yellow blobs down here. If you want to put a fourth one, you can. And my green is dry. We will, oh, well, we've got our yellow here. Let's put some dots of yellow up here. Now go above your pencil lines for these blue circle flowers. And we're just going to put some dots of yellow in the middle area, like where you see in the picture. Be careful you don't put your arm in your yellow on the cat. Mine is still pretty wet. So I'm just doing a few dots like that. See? Some random drop dots. I think it's just some more flowers in the background. Just do them kind of random. They don't all have to be the same size. <clears throat> okay, then we'll add some other colors as well. Um, all right, I'm going to save my lemons for a little bit here. I want to do our, uh, do, 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 do. let's do our orange so we get to mix some colors now. Mixing is so much fun. So you can take your lid of one of your colors. I will use my yellow lid. And I'm going to, I already have some um, yellow in my lid because it had kind of tipped over. And so I'm gonna use that yellow. So I've got this much yellow. And I'm going to dip this much red on my brush, okay? We're going to swirl the red and the yellow. What color are we gonna make? Orange, right? And I'm gonna get a little more yellow. I'm gonna pour a little bit. You might need help from a parent. I'm just gonna pour a little bit. Can you see? I need a little more. And then I'm gonna grab a little more red and swirl that together. I think I need more even. I like to use the caps of these little paint cups to do our mixing. Then you don't need a palette or anything. I think that's a pretty good orange. Now it's not as bright of an orange like we did our pumpkins last time. Um, that's why I like using some of those bright colors right, um, right from the bottle. Things, it looks like McDonald's. Yes, yeah. Um, so I would have given you orange, but I want you guys to practice mixing the colors, okay? So we're mixing okay, the orange. Really? I mix bad colors all the time. All the time. <laughs> awesome. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the top part of this, um, the window or the shutter, whatever this is over here. This is going to be orange, okay? It might look more of a peachy 
orange shoe, but it's fine. I just want you practicing the mixing part, okay? So that part of the window is orange, and then Dude, this. Mine looks pink. Kind of pink. It is kind of a pink. I would almost call this no, salmon. No, for real. Mine is pink. That's okay. That's okay. I mix red and yellow together. Yep. It's looking pink. It's okay. Mine is kind of pink. I think I would call it salmon because it's no, kind for of real. A... It's not kind of pink. It's a totally okay. pink. <laughs> Do you want to add a little bit more red? Try adding a little more oh, red. Oh, dude, I have a lot of red with it. <laughs> okay. Well, do what you can. We're just practicing mixing colors. Okay. It's looking like orangey now. Oh, good. Look, yep. Maybe I need more yellow. Maybe. Yep. Play with it till, till you find a shade of an as close to an orange that you like and use that. So like I said, it's not bright orange. That's why I like using some colors straight out of the bottle because you can pick and choose different colors. There's so many at the store, but we also need to learn how to mix colors. So now you made orange, I mix right? colors all the time, remember that. Yes, I did remember. But some kids haven't practiced mixing colors a lot. I'm gonna do the hills now. So it's good to practice and know what you're trying to mix. So if you start with the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, then you create lots of other colors. All you need is those, right? Yep, exactly. Now, different paints different companies of paint. See, I've these paints are all the same brand, but different brands, actually even the same um, brands, will have two different reds. But if you mix yellow with one, it looks more orange, and yellow with the other red, it looks more pink. So it depends on the hue. Here's a new word in painting, hue of a color. And did you just make that up? Pardon me? You just make that up. No, I didn't make it up. <laughs> nope. Um, there. I already finished my orange. You're all done with your orange? Okay. Did you do the floor and the bottom over here? Oh, no. Okay, go ahead. If you're already done with the top orange. Actually, my orange is getting more orangey. I think the colors just had to sit and mingle a little longer, you think? But it looks like on the cat has some orange. Yep, yep, we'll have to add him in a little bit. We'll finish the floor. If you have the Wait a minute, I have a little left. Okay. So, hue, the word we just talked about, colors have different hues. And um, blues can have kind of purpley blues, a hue of purple in it, or a hue of just straight blue. Um, like I just talked about reds. Reds can have a pink hue or a more orange or yellowy hue. So colors aren't usually straight that color, okay? Um, you might have heard of the color primary red or primary yellow or primary blue. Those are straight colors. That's why we can mix different colors with the primaries. Um, so I need to do that red. So I'm gonna... It's looking like red. Is it? That's fine. It's okay. We're just getting practicing, mixing the colors. So I'm gonna finish this here. And we have a few more. We've got one orange blob right here that we will paint. And then we'll get into the cat and get some shading. The orange and the light green and the cat, we consider that shading because it's showing 
um, where there's shadowing on the cat. And that's how Matisse created, um, that's why he created the orange and the green on the cat to show shading. I'm going to do a blob of green, um, orange right here. Teacher? Yes, yes. Do I hear something? They had, do I hear something where they had to come of more or yes. later? Sure. By L. Oh, yes. He came. Oh, really? With a little rain, with a reindeer. Oh, wow. Okay, now watch up here. See where I put the yellow dots for flowers in the grass? I I'm put some little orange dots. Orange, yep. Do some little orange dots. They don't have to be the same size again. Just some random places, like flowers kind of grow random in different places. Just a few, just a few orange dots. And then... All right, let's work on some orange. Let's do the shading with our orange on our cat. So, actually, you know what? I forgot to finish the tail. Already. I did that and the or and the little orange already. Okay, perfect. And I love that all the orange things. So, I got rid of my brush. So I'll be ready for the next color. I forgot to finish filling in the tail here, so. All right. My yellow, now look at how much yellowish. But yeah. that's gonna still have some other yellow. Okay, that's fine. Now, I'm gonna water down my orange a little bit. Okay, so we're going to make one straight line in the middle of the tail. We still want to have yellow on both sides. So kind of a thin stripe of yellow down the cat's tail. Okay, right to the base of the tail. Right there. And then I'm going to get a little more on my brush. And do you see that line of orange on his back? It goes with the curve of his back, right? So we're gonna make a curved orange line from close to the base of his tail at the bottom of his back there. And we're just going to bring it up here and it will stop past his ear like that, okay? We still wanna have a little bit of yellow on the outside here. Now we're going to make, let's see. So under his face, you have the orange shadow. So we're going to make orange. All right, following along his cute little face. And I'm gonna try and go right up next to his nose. And it stops right over here, that shadow. Right there. So you have some shadowing on his tail on his back, under his chin, kind of on his chest. And then we need some orange shadowing on his leg, right? We're seeing through that fish bowl. And I'm just going to, I want to leave it yellow right here on his leg, but I'm just going to bring some orange right up along his leg. We have a nice clean line around his leg. And then his little paw that's in the bowl, naughty little kitty. We're going to add a little orange in the middle section, not the bottom part, but just the middle section. I'm gonna widen it a little bit. Let's put a little bit of shading with the orange on his paw there, all right? Um, we will actually, let's just use our orange and let's make the, um, I think it's probably an orange, huh? You think that's an orange, orange? Let's paint that right here. Finish up our orange. How are we doing on time? Oh, okay. We're almost done. If anyone has to leave to go to something, 
Um, I'll send the link that later this afternoon and you can finish. So I am going to finish the red right here while the green and the orange is drying. And I'm going to rinse the orange out of my brush now that I'm finished with orange. Oh my gosh. Do you see my arm? Where's the camera? I got orange on my arm, just like I told you not to. Did you do it too? <laughs> yes, we are just a mess, huh? Oh, well, I noticed because I'm missing some of that orange down here. This is where I bumped. So I need to cover that up. I need to get some more orange on my brush because I made a mess. All right, now I'll try to let that dry. See, even the teachers are messy. And that's okay. We're allowed. All right, I'm going to rinse it twice because this orange is really in my brush. And we need to wash our brushes after paint class, right? Soap and water? Um, yes. Yes. Can I do the table right now? Um, if you want to go ahead and start on your blue table, go ahead. Okay. I, I need to finish my red because I forgot a spot. I'm going to do red right here. And then don't forget these two little spots of blue. I'll show you as soon as I'm done with my red. Around in the jar. Okay, it looks like I missed the same spot. Did you? <laughs> That's okay. We got it. So I'm just going to finish this little spot and then jump to blue. And then we'll need to finish in yellow. We've got some blue flowers. Um, actually, we can do some red dots up here in the grass, some flowers in that window there. We'll put a few dots of red, if you have your red out still. <clears throat> Get right up close to his little arm. Okay, now I'm going to do a few dots of red up here, like we did with the yellow and the orange. And then also having some different colors that are in the painting up here in this green, it helps bring color all the way around your painting. It helps kind of draw your eye all the way around. All right, so that's that. That's enough red there, I think. And blue. So let's go back to our blue. And I'm going to do a few dots up here of blue. Don't want to forget those. Remember, they can be bigger and smaller like that. <clears throat> and so this little spot that is, it looks like it's part of his leg. Sorry, loud dog. <laughs> Barking at the mailman, the mail carrier, I think is out front. All right, so this little spot is blue. And actually, I think I made that, I think I need to make that yellow over here. And this part, I guess the chair, we're going to call this the chair, right? So this part of the chair is blue that matches the table and the sky. And remember, what is this? What is blue considered? Warm or cool? Cool. Very good. So I'm just, this is kind of a triangle shape. Do you see that little blue spot? We're seeing through the fishbowl to the chair and it's kind of a triangle shape. So that's blue and we need to do our table. So let's go ahead and do the table. I think everything is dry. So I'm going all the way around. I like to sometimes outline shapes that I'm painting. And if I'm going to fill in the whole shape, then I like to outline it so I have a nice 
clean line to start with. I'm going to go around this little lemon. You see um, in the picture, there's some little, two little lines, black lines in that lemon, and then there's one black line on the right lemon. We'll do that without our outlining, okay? And with the outlining we'll do in a moment, if you want to use a marker, a black marker, whether it's Sharpie, um, whichever kind, or you can just use your paintbrush. Sometimes I like to use a marker, even a paint pen, um, to do some outlining in my artwork because they're smaller than a big old paintbrush. And you can do lots of fine details. So I'm going right up next to the fishbowl, see? And then the other side, go right up next to the wall, the fishbowl and his little paw here. Like that, and then go all the way around his paw to the other side of the table here. <clears throat> I'm going to go around this fruit and we will finish the fruit in just a second here. I've got three yellow fruits to paint, but I wanted to make sure we got the table in. See if you can kind of create a couple toes here on the cat. So he painted lots of paintings of his cats, his two cats and his two kids. He painted often, especially when they were little. <clears throat> he did a lot of still lives. And I think we talked a little bit last time that this is partly a still life because it has fruit and a fish bowl sitting on a table. And a still life is something that sits still, right? It doesn't have much life to it. But um, there's a little bit of movement I think we we kind of see in this picture because the cat is alive and he's already got his hand in that fishbowl and the fish are alive. So I don't know that I would actually call this a still life but there are properties of a still life in this painting. <clears throat> So fill in, just go carefully around these lemons. I know it's kind of hard painting in a circle with a straight brush, isn't it? Does anybody have trouble with it? Sometimes I do. You just have to be real careful. Just do your best. And make the curve of this table right here. Anybody having any trouble with painting their table? Everybody good. So we'll finish this little spot and then we'll do the circle flowers in the window. So we've got one, two, three yellow fruits we will paint. There's actually four on the table, aren't there? There's an orange and three lemons. And there goes my not loud dog. Yeah, she's barking at the mail carrier. <laughs> oh my gosh. Same mail carrier, same time every day. She always barks at her. Well, my dog barks at any stranger. <laughs> yeah, so does this girl. That's good. She's on here. Yep. Good watchdog, right? All right, now I'm doing the. Paint. She's totally washed up. Sometimes <laughs> if the door is open, she'll run out there and chase people. Yep, 
Get so in the car. Oh, geez, that's scary. I don't want her to get hit. She's not even scared. She's not. <laughs> oh, she's scared when my dad hits her. Yeah. With yeah. his belt. Babe. <laughs> Mom, he does that all the time. <laughs> he does. <laughs> You're the one who tells him. <laughs> Well, my dogs got Spanx, um, I think two days ago, because they got out from under the garage door. It was open a little bit. They both got out and chased a big dog. Um, oh, dear. That's what my dog would do. <laughs> and they, like, if the door is open, or the garage door, yep. the, that door yep. opens, or if she's in the backyard and the other door is open, she'll go for that one. Yep. Yep, this dog was luckily on a leash and very nice, um, but... Even a dogs, walk, she barks. Yeah, yep, so does this girl. Okay, I think I can even put a little more blue on these shapes. I know the blue... Whenever you guys do the green on the cat. Yep, we'll do that next, after we get these circles. If you want to go back over the shapes on the rug over here and on the wall here, you can put another coat on. It'll brighten up the blue a little bit, okay? I'm going to turn my canvas to the side again, and I'm gonna do those circles on the left. Remember we covered them up a little bit with green? Oh, yeah. That so let's do that. We have one. Do you see one? You can see right through the fishbowl, right? I was using blue earlier. Yep, yep, we're going back to the blue. I've got this little shape that you're seeing right through this see-through fishbowl. So that's in there. I've got circle here. How many? I've got three circles on the side here. I've got a row of three circly blocks. I'm fast. You're fast. Sometimes I'm fast, There's but a few more. We got three now. Double that. See? Yep. I'm so we've got three here. We've got a row of three circles here, and we're going to do three more circles here. And two circles here. And like I said, even after class, when the blue is dry and you want to go back over with blue a little bit, you can. Because um, this blue, it is... Um, it needs another coat to fill in, I think. All right, so there's a circle there and there. So two rows of two, three rows of three. And we already have our, take her, right, Riley, take her please. Um, I, think um, I already finished those dots. You did? Okay, okay, good. Um, I'm almost even done. So let's do our. Oh, I have to do my green. Yep. My cat. Yep. That's all I have to do. Then I'm done. Yep. Well, we have to go over the the outlining. We'll do that quick. We're almost done, everybody. Okay. Um, do you need a pencil? Um, if you want to use your black. <clears throat> oh yeah, you... that's why you had it. Yeah. I had to do our. I do I cast um little things so I can make his two toes. Okay. Okay, good. All right, so now we're gonna mix one more time. We're gonna mix a bright lime green that kind of matches the green on the cat and that. Uh, top I gotta use on the what, what are we gonna use a black? In just a moment. All right, so here's my green I have on the plate. If you have your green on your cap or just pour, um, mix some, or put some of your green on your cap, okay? And we're going to mix some yellow with it. So my green is on my plate right here, and I'm going to pour a little bit of yellow on really it. Really what I want to bake. Yes. I like colors. Um, I, I use my little thingy. Mm, good. 
and I just remember when I was mixing my my thing on the top of my yellow, it oh. mixed with the other yellow. Oh. So now what? Do you need yellow with it? Yep. So we're mixing oh. yellow with well, our green. Well, that yellow doesn't work. I have some yellow in my box. Okay. Okay. Tape. I'm gonna get some because that yellow is way mixed up. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. So I mixed a little bit of the yellow with the green to make a nice bright lime green. Now that's where we will go over on our cat. Let's look at all the places we have green on our cat. I see back here on his shoulder. So we're going to bring some green right over top the yellow and come, it curves around and it follows his arm, his little leg all the way down to the middle of his leg down to his foot okay see that green should be lighter than your other green right because we lightened it up with the yellow so green is already a secondary color because we mix green with we get blue no we get green when we mix blue and yellow but we're making it even a brighter green when we mix more yellow in with our green. So I'm bringing green down to his foot, <clears throat> leaving some yellow on either side. <clears throat> um, and this is just a shadow. It's not because he's yellow and green, is it? He's, or orange. He has shadows on him because light is not getting to every part on his body, just the yellow areas. So shadow here, we'll make a little shadow on his ear. Do you see some green on his little triangle ear? So you can paint a green triangle for his ear and it goes right over touching the green right here. We'll add a little green on his little face, his cute little face. So his nose is there. It's going to go on the edge of his face over his nose to the other side of his face. Just a little area right here. There's green on his face. Yep. Yep. There's a little green on his face. And then do you see by his belly? There's a little triangle of green there too. All right, here. That just shows that there's a shadow under his belly. And then one last bright green, <clears throat> the top of our water. So the rest of the water Matisse made green. We're making the lime green for the top, okay? Oh, I'm getting blue on me now. Be careful of that blue up from your table if it's still wet. So I'm, I'm going to turn it. So making it lime, bright lime green for that top part of the water in the bowl. And then the other side as well. Oh, and we have to do our lemons. Do you still have lemon, lemon, yellow for your lemons? When I mix colors, I like to use just a little bit of the color. I can always add in more. So you don't make all of the one color all mixed in. That's just something that you learn along the way. All right, so there's my lime green for the top of the water. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna rinse that green out of my brush. All clean and let's paint our last fruit here, and then we'll do some outlining. And if you have to leave, that's fine. You can do your outlining of all of our shapes here with the black, including two marks on this lemon and one mark on that lemon. And we have to make his eyes with our black too. Okay, I'll show you that in just a second. <clears throat> I hope we're all doing okay on time. 
All right, that little lemon is behind this orange or peach. Picture? Yes. I'm done with that whole picture. Look. Oh my gosh, you got it done. Very good job, Lily. Wow. It looks like they're going up fast, right? Yeah, yep. Uh, you should be. I'm done. Crap. And look. do you want to go over with your your black? This is mine. Very nice. Oh my god, mine. Chloe. Just on the top. Wonderful. Oh my gosh, you guys should be so proud. All right, I'm going to finish got, the yeah. outlining. I got paint all nice over that. me. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, no. You have to rinse okay, it. Okay, bye. All right, I'm going to go over with my outlining. So if you don't want to outline, you don't have to. I like outlining. You want to? Okay. No. Otherwise, if you're all done painting, you can I don't like take outlining. off. You don't? Okay, you don't have to. You do not have to. Okay, bye, guys. Thank you. Yes. Bye. You guys all leaving? Yeah. All set? Does anybody want to outline with me? I'm, all I'm doing for outline outlining is going over these, okay? All right. You can, you can leave if you'd like, Zach, if you're all set, okay? If you want to watch me outline, I'm going to finish outlining, okay? Thank you for coming to class. It was fun today. I hope everybody else liked it. I'm out now. You had fun? Great, great. That makes me happy. Whoops, I'm getting my arm in it again. So I'm just going to outline all the lines in black. So if you want to do that on your own, you can. <clears throat> this will take me a few minutes, but I want to keep the outlining in the recording if anybody else needs to watch this class over again. So if you want to do this, you can. Otherwise, if you're all done painting, Zach, you, can, you guys can go. It was fun. Thank you for spending the morning with me. <clears throat> Oh, the window has outlines. This is much easier with a smaller brush. Finish the window here. And I think I'm going to turn it this way and do the side. Still in class, bud. Let's see. That line stops there. And continue up his tail. All right. I think everybody's out of class. Oh, was there a message? Okay. All right. So just finishing up outlining. Sometimes it helps to thin out your paint on your brush with a little water. So I'm just going to go around. It actually goes more smoothly when you add a little bit of water. And it comes around here. Hi, 
I am going to lose my marker. You are? Okay, good. That A marker is so much faster um, than a paintbrush. This will take me a little while, but I guess I will just continue with my paintbrush. But I will be pokey. You're probably going to be done really fast. <clears throat> I wasn't sure if you were still here. Looks like you're the last one with me here. That's cool. Uh, let me start on my paw. This little kitty's foot. And the other side. All the way up to the top. I think when we outline things, it helps helps you to see the different shapes. I'm not sure if that's why he, Matisse, outlined a lot of his shapes in his paintings, but that's my guess. So they kind of stand out. It does really help you see the shapes, though. Oh, there goes my loud mouth dog. Go up this paw. <clears throat> and this is a long line. I hope you can still see the lines. It falls all the way up. I think nobody else wanted to outline. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so now we need to go around, let's see, his little ear, we have two black lines that help make that ear stand out, right? Oh my gosh, sorry. And this goes around his face as well as makes his... brush here. Okay, a little bristle I got in my paint. All right, so this goes around his face, stops right here, and then it picks up. And this line connects to his ear, his other ear. So we'll make a, two lines of a triangle for this ear. that. And let's go around his face. And we have to make his eyes. And he's got two little marks for eyes and they would be, if you painted your green right here, I'm making an eye right here. And here. Is that a good place for a couple eyes? And then, let's see, I've got a line right here, part of that wall. Go down that way. And we need to outline our jar, our fish bowl. So we'll go around here. Like I said, if while well, you're using a marker, aren't you, Zach? I'm just making my black more watery with some water. And it makes it a little bit easier to paint these lines, these fine lines. So I'm going around that top oval of the jar. Oh, need more. I think my black is starting to dry. All right. Finish this around here. All 
And let's see, he also outlined that top part of the water that we painted lime green. So we need to outline that as well. And I'm going to outline the jar now, or the fish bowl. And the bottom. Outlining can take a little bit of time, huh? But I think it does add to the picture in the end. So I need a line all the way up to here. So line in the rest of the jar. We're getting there. Um, if you want to go around these shapes up here, you can. I'll do that quickly. And just Three of these are heart shapes. If you can get a heart shape with your brush like that. This is kind of an oblong shape. And one more heart. We've got lines in the floor down here. So here's kind of a horizon line or the floor. And here's some zigzag lines we've got. And I guess it's the rug. And looks like I got yellow paint on my red floor. I'll have to cover that up a little bit. And then some more zigzags. So we'll make those zigzags however you like. And then a couple short zigzags here. That's the bottom. And then we have one more line down here for the floor or the rug, whichever it happens to be. So we got that side done and we need to go around our table like that. And then we'll go around our fruit. Put a couple dots on the fruit to show little dimples in that lemon. They're both lemons, really. My yellow is still wet, though. I'm going to be careful with that. I think I can go over this one, outline that, and then we'll outline the orange like that. Like I said, I'm going to save these two lemons to outline because they're wet. Need to do our little fish. Oh, and the bottom of the bowl. So this line goes right to the point. See where the point of the jar is at the bottom? It shows the bottom shape of the fish bowl. And then we need to go around the outside of our little fish. So I just kind of make it like a big teardrop drop shape like that. And this little guy. And one more fish. If you want to use a dot of yellow for the fish eyes, you can do that. Um, almost, almost done. I know this one's taking a little bit longer. Oh my gosh, 11.40. All right, let's outline this guy. He's just about dry. And then I've got a little dimple, a tiny little smile line, a smile shape. And then make the point on this lemon. And two little dimple marks there and there on that, okay? And let's do some um, some of these V lines. 
I don't know if they're stems for flowers. I'm not sure what he had in mind when he made this. I'll make two of these there. I think I've got one, two, three, four lines here. I'm going to do some more and just be careful that you don't put your arm in the black. Um, there's a V up here and a line here. He just has some random circles and the lines on this. I'm not really sure what they are, but that's okay. All right, so those are done. And let's finish out our window. Need the outline here. Did you find all your outlines, all your pencil lines to go over, bud? <clears throat> and then just our design. So I've got a line here and then this colorful rug. There's some kind of wavy lines. Can you go follow the wavy lines with your marker? Like that. And some more wavy lines. And that goes right off like that. And you can go around these lines. Again, I got yellow all over my red. So I'm gonna have to go back over that. So I'm just outlining all these colors we painted with the black. And you can see them a little bit better. Because he outlined all of his little shapes on his painting. Um, and then the table legs and then we're done. Thank you for staying with me here guys. It was a longer class. It's hard to get painting done inside a, an hour. <clears throat> Good Matisse's cat with red fish. How are you doing there bud? All set? Yay! Good job! Woohoo! Did you have fun? It was a good day? Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sticking out to finish the painting with me. I appreciate it. I hope you had fun. Did you put a dot for the eye for your fish? You can do a little yellow dot for the eye on each of the fish, okay? I'm going to do that right now, then you can see. I've got a dot here, here, here. There. Now I'm going to call him done. Fun project, huh? You want to show me one more time? Very good. Yay. Good job. Well, thank you for joining me today, okay? You guys did wonderful. So proud. Bye. All right. Bye. Time. I'll see you in about two weeks, okay? Okay. You take care. Where's my, oh my gosh.